Hey, Joe Gilder here. Welcome back to sunny Nashville. I have a feeling I have a white side of this face because of all the beautiful sun. Um, it's another episode of Mixed Together. In the last episode, we worked on the drums, and I apologize. <laughs> I don't apologize, but it was a longer episode. And to kind of circle around a just a snare drum and make it sound good. So uh, it was longer than probably normal. Hopefully we're past that. By the way, I went back and listened, and... <laughs> I dig it. I like where that snare is sitting. JoJo's happy. Let's move on down the list of tweaks from the client. Cool delay at 2 minutes and 55 seconds on Old of Gold. Could the timing of the repeat be nudged back more so it locks into the four beat for the bar? Absolutely. So let's go find that. It was over here, I think. little echo that's the, what I was mentioning a couple episodes ago I don't want to do much of that in a song like this because it's very folky you don't want to get crazy but I like to put something like that in there occasionally so real quick that's on the quarter note and it's just this vocal and it's just um, it's just in this one section so I didn't get the tempo from them for this song. You may remember I tapped in the tempo to um, to get to guesstimate, and I'm guessing between the way she sang it and the way this repeat is hitting, it just feels a little off. So maybe that offset might have done it. I'm not sure. Looking for the fool's gold. Wandered off. Here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, this is a beat delay, so it doesn't actually give me the ability to... It doesn't give me the ability... Ah, okay, never mind. I'm not worried about it. It doesn't give me the ability to change the tempo or to switch to milliseconds like another delay would. Instead of getting an all-new delay, I don't want to because it's just one little section. Let me just tap it in a little better. Looking for the food. So just tapping it there, I don't think I messed up anything on the song. It's always a little dangerous tapping in tempo changes. Um, all right, what is wrong with you? Studio One has decided to not let me zoom out. What are you doing? I guess I can't zoom out anymore. That was weird. That was weird. Something didn't feel right. Anyway. Um, where is it? So I did just jack up all my automation. Hang on. Let's undo that. Undo modify tempo. Oh yeah, okay. So modifying the tempo moved this over. Let me go and tell this to stop moving. It's set to be, okay, now. Let's try back to 78 now. Actually, hang on. No, undo. The problem is all the automation that I've done will move if I change the tempo. I don't know, I don't know why that would need to be a thing, but let's just go select all of these and make sure they are set to seconds instead of beats. So now it shouldn't move. Let's test that theory. It's at 76. Let's change it to 200. I don't know why this. Okay, 200, 300. Okay, nothing moved, we're good. 
So go back to 76, and then we'll bump it to 78. I think that was the tempo that felt a little better. For the fool's gold, there we go. <laughs> All that work just to make that second repeat of gold hit on the beat. Um, yeah, digital technology, man. Such a pain in the rumpus sometimes. Okay, so we can check that as done. Next, some things on Guitar One. Can the level of Guitar One be decreased throughout the song, especially in the intro versus in any sections where Caitlin's solo lead vocals are present? You want Guitar One decreased? You got it, boss. Here's what I do in these situations. So they may come back. You can come in here, you can grab a fader, move it down, right? No problem. The thing is, they can come back and say, well, after hearing that, we want it to go back to the original level. And yeah, you can go and kind of feel it out and hope to get it back to the same level, but you'll never remember exactly what that level was. Now, if you saved a version of this, which I should have done before I started doing tweaks, where I go mix one, uh, where I can refer back to that, which I already messed that up, sorry. But even if you don't want to do that and go back and look at the level and then switch back over and actually enter in the exact number of the fader, what I do is really easy. I come over here, I grab a mix tool plugin or whatever plugin you want to use. And <clears throat> so this is the guitar one that we want to turn down. So I come up here and I turn it down. So we'll try 3 dB or whatever the whatever feels right. Let's go ahead and do that. They're especially worried about it when it's just Caitlin singing by herself. So let's let's find verse 2. Well, I am a cluttered house. Locking doors to keep it. Okay. That tucks it back a little bit. I like it. Let's make sure verse one still feels okay. Come a little closer here. No need to try and hide nor fear. Your lips may lie, but I know. Your soul tells every truth. I think that works 3DB down. Let's listen from the intro. I think that's a good call. 3 dB, again, it's just kind of where I start, and then you can go in between. That feels pretty good. Um, and remember, this was the guitar that didn't sound super great, had some noise on it, it just kind of, a, I don't know exactly what kind of guitar it is or how it was recorded, but um, it, it wasn't like super amazing, so turning it down actually probably feels pretty good, and we'll address the next question they have for us. But what I was showing you about the mix tool, why not just turn the fader down, Joe? Because now if they come back and say, no, go back to the original level you had, all I got to do is go boop and it's back. So this is kind of like a volume changer plugin is how I'm using it. And I do that a lot. So when, you know, if people come back, I'm not going to remember, especially if they had a lot of tweaks they wanted, I'm not going to remember which ones I did. But if I see a mix tool at the end of the chain, I know that I probably put that there just to change the volume. And I can go look and see and say, oh yeah, 3 dB down, turn that off or split the difference or whatever. It's all right there. I know I have both the before and the after available to me right here. It's kind of cool. All right, let's see what else they want on this guitar. Levels down, chick. Is there a way you could adjust the tone to be a bit warmer, less bright, closer to the tone in the rough mix? Maybe shoot for halfway. Okay, so this was a guitar I wrestled with. Um, uh, you, if you watch those videos where I was mixing it, let's go listen to their mix quickly. So they're wanting it to be warmer like that. To me, that sounds muddy. It's kind of, it's very wah, 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 and it's kind of hard to listen to at a, at, at, for a long length of time or at a loud volume. So I'm going to try to split the difference and make this a little warmer. I'm not going to go all the way because I don't think that serves the song as well. So... And okay, the way I'm going to do this is actually a lot like I do the the EQ I, uh, or the, the mix tool that I showed you. I'm going to put a separate plug-in. I know three EQs on a track is ridiculous. But I'm going to use this as kind of here are the... When I look at this channel strip, I can say, okay, there's an EQ at the bottom. That must be the tweaks that I made. And so if they say, no, go back to where it was, I can just remove this EQ and we're off to the races. As opposed to remembering which band of EQ I changed and all that. Again, it's just an ease of use thing for me. 
makes my life easier if they come back and ask for changes. So I'm going to try now to warm it up a little bit. One thing I did, because we already adjusted the volume per their request, if I start boosting the lows and the EQ, it's going to affect the volume. So in this instance, I'm going to use the auto EQ button on here. Not auto EQ, the auto gain button. That will adjust the output volume based on the boost that I did. So keep the same relative volume. And that actually sounds pretty good to me. That feels good. It adds a little bit of that, you know, we're boosting almost 6 dB, bring it down just a smidge. Um, and we're adding it back a little bit of warmth that maybe we took away, but that mid-range buildup that was just a little bit higher than where we're boosting is still taken care of. When I turn this EQ off, when I turn them all off, you'll hear. That frequency is just building up too much and makes it feel weird. By cutting those out with that EQ and then boosting the lows below that, it feels pretty good. I love it when a plan comes together. Boom, check it off the list. This There's an apparent high frequency tape hiss sound in this track that may have occurred during tracking as a result of preamp settings, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's most noticeable in the intro. It said, I tried to remove it with isotope, but couldn't remove it completely. Is there an EQ uh, to reduce the frequency hiss? If not, no worry. So I think actually by boosting the lows and turning it down, I think we took care of that. But just for the sake of trying let's grab this last eq that we have let's just try like a high pass filter and just see So I kind of split the difference. It, it does, there's a little bit of airiness up there that's not contributing to the sound, and there's a little bit of the sound of the finger on the strings that gives it a little detail that I like to keep in there. Um, so I split the difference between the two. So I put it at about 7.5K is being rolled off, and actually I think that can work. It doesn't change the tone too much, and it makes it a little less distracting with that hiss. And again, this is meant to be kind of a warmer sounding guitar. So with everything we've done, I think we've accomplished that pretty well, and I hope they like it. So that is it. Um, there's a couple things we're going to look at. They wrote back about the um, the vocal editing that we talked about in the last video that they're wanting to change. So I'm going to go and just, in the next episode, just double check, make sure I've got those changes in the right place uh, or add them if needed. And then we'll send this off to them and see if they come back and say, yay, we're done. Let's master it or let's a couple, do a couple more tweaks. Either way, I'm fine with it. Let's do it. By the way, if you haven't downloaded these tracks, Go to homestudiocorner.com slash MT for Mixed Together. You can download the tracks to this series and also the previous Mixed Together series if you want to get crazy and uh, have some fun with it. All right, that's it. See ya.